I had a question did come in kind of earlier today via email from Sean. I want to get to that question first. And Sean was in, is in, excuse me, a diagonal calendar spread on FDX. And he had sold the March 18th to 17.50 strike and uh, bought, I don't know what spread he bought, but that we won't need that for this discussion. Anyway, he short the March 18 to 17.50. And I don't know what price he actually got. I entered in the price that I would have gotten if I entered this position on 3-1. Okay, on March 1st, when the stock was trading at around 214. It went up to about 220, 219 earlier today. And that prompted Sean's question. Let's just go to the profit and loss chart here. And with the stock up to 219 this morning, it was rounding about about 220. The buyback cost of this call was a little bit over $9. I believe it was $9.20 on the position. And what I tended, what he wanted to know, excuse me, is that when he looked further out, he looked the next week out, he wanted to go further out of the money, of course. He wanted to go up to the 225 strike, roll this call up to maybe the 225 a little bit more to give himself more upside room on the position. But all of the rolls were going to be done at a debit. And I think the issue here was that I didn't know what price Sean originally received. The buyback cost was $9.20. So sure, if he had only received a dollar in premium or a dollar fifty in premium when he originally sold this $217.50 call, it was going to cost him eight, nine dollars to buy back. He's down seven dollars. We look a couple weeks out to April 1st here, we could see that that 225 is only about 580 or so. Uh, the 230 is at 450. So he couldn't roll for a credit. He'd have to roll further out in time. But what concerned me in this case, if we received 830 here, we saw we could buy it back for 785 because the stock did pull back to 213.18. So we're in a good position. Any roll we do now is going to be rolling for a credit, maybe not as high as the original $8 we received. Um, in that case, you know, pay $7 to buy it back, only make 80 cents, get another $4 at that higher strike. That's all well and good. We're still rolling for a credit in that case. However, what Sean asked is that if I did perform that roll, let's just do the roll here. Let's just close this position out, our March 18th short call only at, let's just say we pay the full price at $7.50. So what is that going to do this position? We took in 830 originally, so we're only going to gain 80 cents on the position. Let's take that off of our long call. Let's drop this down to 2680 because we're going to simulate essentially buying this back for 750. We keep the 80 cents profit between the 830 we sold it for and the 750 buyback. And let's go ahead and put that down to 2680. Now, again, to roll for a credit, we want it to go up to maybe the 225. Let's even just go with the 230 strike. We'll take that at midpoint. Oh, added it twice. There we go. So now we have a new calendar spread with a wider berth to the upside, and we were able to do this at a credit. But even if it was done at a debit, Sean wanted to know, is it a good idea to sell a cash secured naked put out of the money to make up the debit so that I can still roll essentially for a credit. I did not think this was a good idea. Would selling that put option give you an extra net credit if I had to roll this short call for a debit in this calendar spread? Would it, could I get another $3? Could I get another $4? Absolutely. But I'm in this calendar spread. Because likely I didn't want to buy the stock at this high price. I'm in this calendar spread because I didn't want to deal with the margin requirement of having the stock purchase or the higher premium in that case. So selling an out of the money naked put, even though it was deep out of money, let's go back to the same expiration. Let's get an extra, you know, we're at 215. So let's get an extra $3 here going to the 190 strike about 25, 23 points out of the money here. And let's go ahead and sell that. I could even go to the 180 or the 185, but if I had to roll for a debit of $2, I could make that a credit of 150 by selling this put. 
but I have to put up the $19,000 or whatever margin requirement I have to cover that short put obligation. I likely didn't want to do that with this portion of my portfolio. The portion that's capital intensive where I might be selling naked puts, doing married puts or doing covered calls, whether it's 40, 50, 60% of your portfolio, and you're trading these calendar spreads or leverage positions with 10, 12, or 15% of your portfolio, I don't want to take away from the other one, that larger portion of my portfolio to have the $19,000 if I wanted this to be the full cash secured put position. Now, the return lowers out. But there's still a substantial risk here increased to the downside because now I can lose on the calendar spread. And yeah, if it went down to 180, 185, we're talking about a 17, 18, 20% decrease in price. Probably not likely to happen, but we've seen some downtrends here <laughs> recently. But that's an extra risk I probably don't want to take on this position just to try to get a little bit extra premium and roll for a credit. And also, Originally, we saw this position was potential max return at the peak on the calendar spread of about 60%. And with the roll we just did for a credit, it was up to about 70% against the cost basis of 1860. Here it actually goes to 2026. And my total debit, all things included, including that naked put, is 1860. So it's over 100% gain. But no, I've got to factor in that for this two week period, I had to put up $19,000. A very high amount for this cash secured position in order to get into it. I don't think this is a reasonable structure. To back that up, let's take a look at the option chain here for FDX real quick. I noticed this after I sent that email. Let's go to March 18th. There is some significant implied volatility here 0 0.7, 0 0.78, 0 0.80, 0 0.8183. Seems a little high for FedEx, even with the current market conditions the way that they are. And going out to those next weeks, if we go out to that April 1st we were focusing on, it's not, it's a little lower. It's a little lower. I'm buying back into a really high implied volatility here on March 18th and not seeing the same high implied volatility out to April 1st. Right away, that told me something. And what that told me is, there's another big reason. Let's go to the stock research tool. I would not want to add the cash secured put on top of this calendar spread, even if Sean decided to roll the position, roll the short call up now that the stock is pulled back. I understand it might be a little bit moot point today. We still might want to roll that position up with more room. But I don't know if I want to add that obligation because earnings are coming out right after the market on 317, right before Friday's standard expiration on 318. And we showed that, yeah, if the stock would have to fall that 17%, 15% or so for that 190 strike put to get into trouble. But again, possibility with the earnings. It's the known unknown. We know it's coming up. We don't know how bad that could affect it. So. Not to, I'm giving any direct advice, and not that I can give any direct advice, you know that. But in this case, I don't think selling the put going into earnings on this calendar spread is a good idea. I think rolling up to a higher strike to give you more room going into those earnings on 317 might be a good idea. I also, depending on if you can roll for a credit now, Sean, at this point, I don't know if I wouldn't mind buying that put for earnings. Now, just in case, yeah, it'd still need a large decline, but you could hedge some of the loss on this position, small amount of only $1,100 instead of losing maybe a little bit more if the stock really fell that far and we just stayed in the spread. Let's see what that is. So what am I saying here? I'm saying that we're going into earnings and you might want some protection on your calendar spread in case there's an unexpected event. And I'd go out to the call expiration as well a little bit beyond the earnings. I wouldn't use the March 18th because that's going to be, as we saw, that high implied volatility to protect the calendar spread. So in this case, what I might consider is buying it, but yes, it is expensive. And if the stock does fall to 190, you're looking at an $1,100 loss on a $2,500 obligation. If I take the put out, 
and assume that we did roll up to the 230 strike with the prices that we had, what could we expect the loss to be at 190 in this case with just the calendar spread? Doesn't look like it's as bad. It's about 824. So the put didn't really help. You might have to look for a higher strike, but rather than selling a put with earnings coming up against this calendar spread, yeah, depending on what your fears are, you might consider buying a put, but you can always adjust the position later if the stock does fall after earnings. Of course, you might have a follow-up conversation on that as well.